assalamu alaikum dear students i welcome you to 40th lecture of probability and stochastic processes after finishing the treatment of theory of probability we have been studying markov chains which is application of probability theory to analyze a time varying random phenomena which takes on values in certain finite or countably infinite values states these values or states are called the state space so as the time varying unpredictable random phenomena evolves it takes on different values in this state space this evolution of this unpredictable phenomena is random is unpredictable but if we know the value of this phenomena at a certain time we can make probabilistic arguments about its possible future values at next sampling instant as this phenomena evolves with time we observe its values at a certain sequence of sampling instances the times at which we observe this random phenomena the value of our observation is the value of a random variable with index equal to the index of the sampling instance so effectively we are working with a large collection of random variables this collection of random variables is countably infinite so we keep on observing the values of this unpredictable phenomena infinitely often at some specified intervals of time so when you are working with a countably infinite collection of random variables and these random variables are associated with each other in a way that if the value of a certain random variable at a certain sampling instance is known then we know that how this next random variable is going to take on its values in a probabilistic sense if we know the value of random variable at sampling instance n and we want to find what will be the probability of random variable at n plus 1 sampling instance then in probabilistic terms we can assign the probabilities to n plus first random variable taking on different values based on our knowledge of what the value is at nth sampling instance so when you are working with this huge countably infinite collection of random variables we analyze the behavior of this evolution in terms of the states that these random variables visit the states which represents the values that these random variables attain and we track we analyze the behavior of this sequence of random variables this markov chain through the behavior of different states if a certain state is visited infinitely often or if a certain state is visited only finitely many times and then it is never visited this type of analysis of states of a state space of markov chain is made possible through use of eigen values and eigen vectors we covered these ideas in previous lectures where we took eigen values and eigen vectors of one step transition probability matrix which is also called stochastic matrix so by looking at values of these eigen values and the nature of associated eigen vectors we could make certain predictions about the long term behavior of this markov chain and this long term behavior is also analyzed in probabilistic sense that is we want to know that in the long run what is the probability of a random variable with very large index having probability distribution in a certain manner 
given some initial probability distribution. By using this eigenvalue, eigenvector type analysis, we were able to determine if a certain Markov chain had a unique long term stationary probability distribution. If it had, then no matter what the starting probability distribution, in the long run, the Markov chain would have a constant, unique, stationary probability distribution. That we can start from any state, but in the long run, probability of a random variable with very large index will have a certain probability distribution that is going to be fixed. And this is going to remain the way for all the subsequent sampling instances. So this stationary invariant probability distribution was modeled as eigenvector with unique eigenvalue of 1. If there is a square transformation matrix that is the stochastic matrix in our Markov chain, then if the incoming probability distribution is same as the outgoing probability distribution that is if at sampling instance n and n plus 1. The probability distribution is same when you process the initial probability distribution through this stochastic matrix then this probability distribution does not change through transformation of this stochastic matrix hence it is an eigenvector with a unique eigenvalue of 1. We also learned that if there is some special type of Markov chain which has a periodicity of 2, then in the long run the stationary probability distribution is not unique but it switches between two stationary probability distributions. And sometimes we have a case where there are three stationary probability distributions and in the long run Markov chain will exhibit a switching rotating behavior where stationary probability distribution in the long run will circulate between first, second, third, first, second and third stationary probability distribution. All this was analyzed through eigenvalues and eigenvectors and we learned that if one step transition probability matrix or stochastic matrix has a unique eigenvalue 1 with associated eigenvector then it has a unique stationary probability distribution and that is exactly equal to that associated eigenvector. Similarly, if a Markov chain has a periodicity of 2, that implies that there will be two eigenvalues with magnitude 1 and one of them will be 1, other will be minus 1 which will be two second roots of 1. And if a Markov chain has a periodicity of 3, then there will be three eigenvalues with magnitude 1 and these three eigenvalues will be third roots of unity. One will be at 1, 0 in the complex plane, other will be at 120 degrees and the third one will be at minus 120 degrees and they all will be on unit circle. We also related these ideas of eigenvalues and eigenvectors with the behavior of n step transition probability matrix. From one step transition probability matrix, we got n step transition probability matrix by raising powers of this one step transition probability matrix. So, if we have a stochastic matrix and you keep on raising its powers, you get a sequence of n step transition probability matrix. And we learned that if a Markov chain has a unique stationary probability distribution, then this sequence of n step transition probability matrices converges to a unique matrix which has all rows which are same as the unique stationary probability distribution. And if a Markov chain has a periodic behavior, the long term stationary probability distribution is not unique but it switches between two values then the behavior of n step transition probability matrix is such that it does not converge to a unique value. It also switches between two long term nth step transition probability matrices. And similarly, 
if the Markov chain has a periodic behavior with three states where the long term stationary probability distribution is observed, then the n step transition probability matrix also circulates between three long term values. So, all these ideas were used to analyze transient, small, finite state space Markov chains. Let's quickly review all the cases that we discussed in previous lectures before moving forward to analyze this periodic behavior and its reasons. The first case that we discussed had only three states and this Markov chain had a long term n step transition probability matrix converging to this matrix P infinity with all rows representing a unique stationary probability distribution. We used eigenvalue eigen analysis and found that the one step transition probability matrix for this Markov chain had three eigenvalues 1, 0.57 and minus 0 0.07. The associated eigenvectors were 0 0.043, 0 0.087 and 0.867 for eigenvalue of 1. This is the only important eigenvector which is the same as this unique stationary long term probability distribution. So, this Markov chain represented a small three state recurrent Markov chain with a single unique long term probability distribution. The next case was a random walk with perfect reflection. We had four states and the random variables assumed values in these four states but if a random variable assumed a value of 0 the next random variable always assumed a value of 1. Similarly if a random variable assumed a value of 3 the next random variable always assumed a value of 2. We analyzed the behavior of this Markov chain and found that it had two eigenvalues 1 and minus 1 which had magnitude of 1. Hence we expected a periodic behavior and we indeed have a periodic behavior where long term n step transition probability matrix is not unique but it switches between two matrices and these two matrices can be obtained through proper multiplication of the eigenvectors and associated eigenvalues and final result is that long term n step transition probability matrix for even values of n is sum of these two matrices shown on your screen and for odd valued sampling instances the n step transition probability matrix is difference of this and this. You subtract the right side matrix from the left side to get a long term n step transition probability matrix for odd values of sampling instance. So, this small Markov chain with four states has two eigenvalues which are two second roots of unity and it has a periodic behavior with two states between which it switches back and forth. The next case that we discussed represented a simple example of a person trying to perform Hajj and it had a total of eight states and a periodic behavior of 3. After analyzing these three cases where the first case was an aperiodic recurrent Markov chain and second case was a periodic Markov chain with periodicity 2 and the third case was a periodic Markov chain with periodicity 3, we slightly modified the second Markov chain and instead of having a perfect reflection, we had imperfect reflection that is when a certain random variable is in state 3, the next random variable will be in the same state with a small probability of 0 0.01 and it will go back to state number 2 with probability of 99%. We analyzed this and we found that this modified random walk has eigenvalues of 1 and minus 0.9967 and if you take higher and higher powers of this diagonal matrix representing all the eigenvalues, you can have 
a final result with 1 in the top left corner and everything else will be 0. Hence, this slightly modified random walk has a unique long term stationary distribution and it does not have a periodic behavior. So, from a periodic behavior, we got an aperiodic behavior by introducing a small self reference that is a small probability of moving from state 3 to 3 in one transition. Today we are going to analyze why this happens, why this periodic chain becomes aperiodic if we introduce such a self reference. I hope that this review will refresh your mind about the concepts covered in previous lectures and now we are going to analyze why some Markov chains are periodic and some Markov chains are aperiodic and a periodic Markov chain can become aperiodic by a slight modification. We are going to use graph theory for this analysis of Markov chains with respect to their periodic or aperiodic behavior. Mathematically speaking, a graph is two sets. In first set, there are nodes and in second set, there are vectors of length 2 and these vectors are representing directed edges which connect one node to another. We will see an example of a graph shortly. So, we are going to use graph theory to represent the graphical model of a Markov chain as a graph and you saw that in graphical model of a Markov chain there were states labeled 0, 1, 2, 3 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and there were edges and these edges were associated with probabilities and probabilities were if an edge goes from state 1 to state 2 and there is an associated probability then it means that probability of moving from state 1 to 2 is that associated probability and that directed edge represents the transition from nth Markov chain random variable to n plus first Markov chain random variable. Let's try to represent this graphical model of a Markov chain with a simple graph. You can see on your screen a graphical model of a simple Markov chain that we have been analyzing. This Markov chain has three states 0, 1, 2. So, these will be nodes and in graph theory a set V is set of nodes and they are 0, 1 and 2. So, there are three nodes in the graph which are the states of this Markov chain. Then all these edges are represented as a set of vectors of length 2 and these vectors represent directed edges. The first element in each vector is the starting point in that transition and the second element is the destination point or destination state. So, all possible transitions from different states to other states are represented as edges or pairs vectors of length 2 of different nodes. So, 0, 0 represents this transition with associated probability of 0.6 where random variable is at state 0 and next random variable is also at state 0. You can have meanings associated with other vectors of length 2 for example, this vector with first element 2 and second element 1 represents this transition with an associated probability of 0 0.1 which happened when machine stopped working and it was sent to a local repair facility. In graph theory, you just have nodes and associated edges represented by all these vectors of length 2. You do not consider the associated probability values with these edges which are represented by these vectors of length 2. So, this is the graph representation of this graphical model of Markov chain. Now, we will apply graph theory to analyze periodic behavior of different Markov chains. 
in graph theory there is a concept of bipartite graph a bipartite graph can be divided into two classes its nodes can be divided into two classes two groups in such a way that there are only interclass edges that is there are edges going from one group to other and from other group to the first one but there are no intra class edges that is in that group there is no edge connecting nodes in a certain group we have this markov chain of random walk and we can divide the four nodes in two groups the first group consists of nodes 0 and 2 and second group consists of node 1 and 3 the first group is represented by encirclement of nodes 0 and 2 and other group is shown with this ellipse around nodes 1 and 3 this representation of markov chain and this representation is equivalent because there are the same four nodes and all the edges have been shown but you can clearly see that there is no edge connecting nodes 0 and 2 and there is no edge connecting nodes 1 and 3 this can also be confirmed by looking here that there is no direct transition from node 1 to node 3 or from node 3 to node 1 similarly there is no direct transition from node 0 to node 2 or node 2 to node 0 hence we can divide these nodes into two groups and we have no intra class edges only inter class edges edges from this group to this group and back a consequence of this type of bipartite graph is that if you want to start from a certain node and want to come back to this node you have to have a circle of 2 you have to go to this group and then come back from another transition there are no odd length cycles there are all even length cycles you can come back to the starting node in two steps or four steps or six steps and there is no odd length cycle in this type of bipartite graph so this results in this markov chain having a periodicity of 2 since you cannot move in one step from this node to any other node in this group you cannot move from this node to any other node in this group in one step you have to have cycles of 2 4 6 and 8 hence this markov chain has a periodicity of Let's extend the idea of bipartite graph to a tripartite graph where all the nodes in the graph can be divided into three groups or three classes and this type of graph has certain properties that is that vertices in one class are not connected to each other in the same class and vertices in one class are connected to vertices in other two classes and if you try to come back to a starting node you have to perform cycles you have to go through number of edges which are three times an integer which are integer multiples of 3 that is if k is an integer then you have to have 3k jumps before you can come back to the starting node let's try to see if we can use this idea of tripartite graph and analyze a markov chain which has a periodicity of 3 you have seen this markov chain being shown on your screen and this had a periodicity of 3 but by looking at this graphical model of this markov chain can you see if this graph is a tripartite graph if you look carefully you might see but let's try to group these nodes logically so that you do get a tripartite graph the grouping that i have done groups node 0 and 3 in one group which are shown in red the nodes 1 4 and 6 form the other group 
which are shown in yellow and nodes 2 5 and 7 form the third group which are shown in blue so the graphical model of this eight state markov chain has been rearranged in a graph and the nodes 0 3 1 4 6 and 2 5 7 form the three groups or three classes you can see that in each group this group which has 0 and 3 there is no direct edge between node 0 and node 3 similarly in the second group which has nodes 1 4 and 6 there is no direct transition from node 1 to node 4 or node 6 or any other node to any other node in the same group and so is the case for this third group but from any group there are edges which connect nodes in this group to nodes in this group or nodes in this group to nodes in this group and you can see that all these edges are directed so if you are in this group of nodes shown in yellow you can only move to this group shown in blue and you cannot come back if you could then you will have a cycle of length 2 which is not allowed in a tripartite graph so from this group of yellow nodes you can only move to this group of blue nodes and from this group of blue nodes you can only move to this group of red nodes and from this group of red nodes you can only move to this group of yellow nodes again hence if you start from any node in this group of yellow nodes you have to perform three jumps before you come back to that node you can come back to that node after performing six or nine jumps but if you want to come back you will always have to perform number of jumps which are integer multiple of three and the same is applicable to all the nodes in the whole graph so if this graph is a tripartite graph there are only those cycles which are integer multiple of three and the markov chain whose graph model is shown here must have a periodicity of three you can confirm this periodic behavior by carefully looking at the graphical model of this Markov chain and see that node 0 and node 3 represented the same group. There is no direct transition from node 0 to node 3 and you will have to make jumps which are integer multiple of 3 for starting in node 0 and coming back to node 0 or starting in node 0 and coming back to other node in the same group so you can see if you want to go from node 0 to 3 you have to make one jump from 0 to 1 then 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3 similarly if you want to come back to same node 0 you have to make a jump from 0 to 1 1 to 5 and then 5 to 0 again or 0 to 4 4 to 5 and 5 to 0 again Similarly, if you want to start in node 3 and want to come back to node 3, you have to go through this a set of 3 jumps from 3 to 6, 6 to 7 and then 7 to back on node 3. Or you can make this sequence of jumps from 3 to 1, 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. You can certainly find longer cycles of length 6, 9, 12 and 15 but these cycles will always be of length which is integer multiple of 3 hence this Markov chain is represented by a tripartite graph and this Markov chain has a periodicity of 3 let's look at that case of a random walk with imperfect reflection the graphical model is shown here and if we are in node 3 or state 3 we go back to state 2 with probability of 99% and come back to the same node the same state of 3 with 1% probability if you look at the equivalent graph model of this markov chain you will see that there is a self reference there is a 
small edge connecting 3 to 3. This is a violation of bipartite graph. In bipartite graph, if node 1 and node 3 are in the same group, there should be no edge connecting node 1 to node 3 or node 3 to node 1 or connecting node 3 to itself. By placing this self-reference transition from node 3 to node 3, we have violated this bipartite graph. Hence, this Markov chain cannot have a periodicity of 2 and we saw that actually it is an aperiodic Markov chain and it is a recurrent Markov chain with a unique long-term stationary probability distribution. Hence, its periodicity breaks down because of this self-reference, the local transition. So far, we have analyzed small, finite state space Markov chains with recurrent states. All the states were revisited infinitely often, sometimes in an aperiodic manner and sometimes in a periodic manner, depending upon the nature of interconnectivity. If the interconnectivity was represented with a graph and that graph was a bipartite graph, we had a periodicity of 2. And if the graph was a tripartite graph, we had a periodicity of 3. But all states were visited infinitely often and either we had a unique long-term stationary probability distribution or a set of 2 long-term probability distributions or a set of 3. You can certainly have Markov chains with periodicity of 4 and 5, but I leave it up to you to analyze those cases if you encounter them. Now we are going to move into a new territory and that is where a finite small Markov chain has a mixture of transient and recurrent states. So there is a Markov chain and it has a finite number of states and some of the states are visited infinitely often and some are visited only finite number of times. I hope you can understand that in a finite Markov chain, a Markov chain with finite states, some states have to be recurrent. It's not possible for all the states to be transient. That is, it is not possible for this evolution of Markov chain to visit all these states only finite number of times and then never visit them. In Markov chains, the sampling instances are always countably infinite. So if number of times a certain state is visited is finite and it is applicable to all states, you add up all these number of times that state is visited, you will get a finite number. So the question is, where will Markov chain go after this sum of all these number of visits? So one of the state must have to be a recurrent state so that that state is visited infinitely often. You can have more than one recurrent state. Actually, the cases that we discussed so far had all the states recurrent states. So you can have one, two or more recurrent states. Similarly, you can have a few transient states, but you cannot have all the states as transient states. So now we are going to analyze Markov chains which have states as mixture of transient and recurrent states. Let's have a look at our first example of such a Markov chain with a mixture of transient and recurrent states. This example is that simplified model of a person trying to perform Hajj where he is not allowed to reapply for another Hajj. So a person goes through different states while he applies for the Hajj, waits for the result of the random draw and then proceeds to Hajj. But once he is there, he remains in that state and he is not allowed to come back to those states where he is waiting and applying for another Hajj. So let's have a look at the graphical model of that simplified example of a person trying to perform Hajj and here you have only six states and you can see that a person can start in any of these states and hopefully eventually he is going to move to state 3. Once in state 3, he is going to remain in state 3 and all the transitions from state 3 
will be again to state 3 with probability 1. So in this Markov chain, state 3 is the only recurrent state. It is visited infinitely often and all these states are transient states. They are visited many times but hopefully they are only visited finite number of time and that finite number could be thousands or millions but eventually this Markov chain evolves in such a way that it reaches this state and then it remains in this state. Let's analyze the behavior of this Markov chain with one recurrent state and five transient states through its one step transition probability matrix, its n step transition probability matrix and eigenvalues and eigenvectors of one step transition probability matrix. This six state Markov chain will have a six by six one step transition probability matrix and it is shown on your screen now. It has a lot of zeros but there are certain non-zero entries also there distributed throughout this one step transition probability matrix also called stochastic matrix. If we take higher and higher powers of this one step transition probability matrix to get n step transition probability matrix will get something which we have called P infinity. So in the long run if we are taking very high powers of this matrix we will get P infinity which is shown here on your screen and it has fourth column all being 1 and everything else is 0. So this should be one clue that which state is recurrent which is visited infinitely often and which states are transient and they do not get visited infinitely often. If you carefully look at this, you can see that it does not matter which starting probability distribution you have. You can take that starting probability distribution with sum being equal to 1 as a row vector and multiply that row vector with this matrix. You are going to get this probability distribution. So in the long run, probability distribution of this Markov chain will be that first three states 0, 1 and 2 will have 0 probability, state 3 will have probability 1 and other two states will also have probability 0. So this Markov chain will evolve in such a way that in the long run you will always find yourself in state 3. Let's analyze the behavior of this Markov chain through eigenvalues and eigenvectors of its one step transition probability matrix or stochastic matrix. If you perform eigenvalue eigenvector analysis of this stochastic matrix, you will see that it has six eigenvalues and they are 1, 0 0.98 and then a complex number with magnitude 0 0.98 and an orientation which is 120 degrees or 2 pi by 3. The third eigenvalue also has magnitude of 0 0.98 and it has an orientation of 240 degrees or minus 120 degrees. The fifth and sixth eigenvalues are 0. You know that you can find the higher powers of stochastic matrix through diagonalization and then taking higher powers of a diagonal matrix with these eigenvalues on the main diagonal. In that case, the higher powers of diagonal matrix will have higher powers of these eigenvalues on the main diagonal. So this 1 will remain 1 and this 0 0.98 will slowly converge to 0. So will these two other eigenvalues with magnitude of 0.98. By the way, all these three eigenvalues with magnitude 0.98 represent three cube roots of a number which is slightly less than 1 which is 0.98 raised to power 3. If you have a positive number which is 0 0.98 raised to power 3, its 3 cube roots will be 0 0.98, 0 0.98 at an angle of 120 degree a complex number and 0 0.98 at an angle of 240 degrees. All these 3 eigenvalues with magnitude less than 1 
will converge to zero as you take on higher and higher powers of this diagonal matrix. But important thing is to look for the eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue because this will not go, this will remain and in the long run the stationary probability distribution will be represented by the eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue. And if you perform the eigen analysis using MATLAB and taking care of the fact that you have to have left sided row type eigenvectors, you can find that the corresponding eigenvector is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And this is exactly the same as the long term probability distribution of this Markov chain which has 0 for first three states 0, 1, 2, 1 for state labeled 3 and 0 for states labeled 4 and 5. So in the long run you will always find this Markov chain in state 3 and all other states are transient and they will be visited only finitely many number of times before this Markov chain moves to state 3 and then it remains in state 3 forever. So state 3 is a recurrent state and all other states are transient states. In this case we had only one state that was recurrent and all other states were transient. But you can have finite state space Markov chains which have more than one recurrent state. An example is two gamblers gambling against each other. One has x rupees, other has y rupees. So total sum is x plus y. So when they start, they start somewhere and then they start betting and the results of bet are such that one of them loses one rupee and other gains one rupee. So they continue to play through this series of bets and once a gambler runs out of money, the game stops. So x plus y is the maximum amount that a gambler can have by winning all the money that other gambler had. So this is a evolving random unpredictable phenomena but it stops at a state where one gambler has won all the money or the other gamblers have. Let's have a simplified version of such a random walk with absorbing ends. That is once you reach the end the game stops and you continue to stay there for subsequent observations of this random phenomena. We are going to have a four state random walk with absorbing ends. The graphical model of this four state random walk is shown here and you can see that if you reach state 3 you stay here and if you reach state 0 you always stay here. And if you are at state 2 you move to state 3 with probability of half and you move to state 1 with probability of half. I have intentionally used 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 for transitions from state 1 to 2 and 1 to 0. I could have used half and half here to represent an equal probability of jumping forward and backward but I have intentionally used these numbers because we are going to use this case in a later lecture where you will see some other relevant results for this Markov chain. Anyway, let's have a look at one step transition probability matrix which is shown here. It has many zeros and it has some non-zero entries but we are interested in its long term behavior where we know that this Markov chain will either reach here and then it will stop evolving or it will reach in state 0 and it will stop evolving again. So let's have a look at its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this one step transition probability matrix. The eigenvalues are 1, 1, minus 0.45 and plus 0.45. Associated eigenvectors are 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and two other eigenvectors are not important because we are only interested in eigenvectors associated with eigenvalues which are 1. There are two eigenvalues with value 1 and there are two different associated eigenvectors. 
which means that if we start with this initial probability distribution we are always going to remain in this probability distribution that is if we start in state 0 we will always be in state 0 similarly if we start in state 3 we will always be in state 3 and nothing is going to change that is what eigenvectors associated with an eigenvalue of 1 imply let's look at long term n step transition probability matrix for this markov chain if you take higher and higher powers of one step transition probability matrix you are going to get this matrix this matrix has two central columns all with zero entries and two end columns with entries which are 1, 0.75 and 0.375, 0, 0.25, 0.625 and 1. This long term n step transition probability matrix should give you a clue towards the long term asymptotic behavior of this Markov chain. If we start with a probability distribution which is 1, 0, 0, 0, we are always going to remain in this probability distribution 1, 0, 0, 0. That we saw from the previous slide where this probability distribution was associated with an eigenvalue of 1. So was this long term stationary probability distribution. But if you start with an initial probability distribution of 0, 1, 0, 0, that is you start in state 1, you are going to end up with a long term stationary probability distribution of 0 0.75, 0, 0 and 0 0.25. So if you start from state 1, the chances are that in the long run, you will be in the state 0, the neighboring state with 75% probability and in state 3, the farthest absorbing state with probability of 0 0.25. Similarly, if you start with probability 0, 0, 1, 0, then in the long run, the probability of you ending up in then probability of you ending up in the neighboring absorbing state of 3 is 62.5% and probability of you ending up in state 0, which is also an absorbing state, is 0.375. So long term probability distributions do depend on starting probability distribution and if you have 1 0 0 0 you will always have 1 0 0 0 but if you have 0 1 0 0 or 0 0 1 0 you will end up with a long term stationary distribution given by the second row or the third row. So the long term stationary distribution depends upon your starting probability distribution and there are many possible values of long term stationary probability distribution and the four cases are in front of you. They are 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 or the two rows in the middle. Why this Markov chain does not have a unique long term stationary distribution even though it has a unique long term n step transition probability matrix destination that is in the long run n step transition probability matrix converges to a unique matrix p infinity but it does not have a unique long term stationary probability distribution actually you can start with any probability distribution with zeros for the middle states and two numbers associated with two end state such that two numbers are going to add up to one. So you can have 0 0.9, 0, 0, 0 0.1 or 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0 0.5. All these combinations of initial probability distributions will give you the same value and they will give you the same ending probability distribution. So in this case where we have two absorbing states, the long term stationary probability distribution depends upon the initial starting probability distribution. With this I conclude today's lecture where we analyze the periodic behavior of recurrent finite state 
Markov chains using graph theory and we analyze the behavior of finite Markov chains with a mixture of recurrent and transient states. Till next lecture, I wish you the best. Thank you. Love is